Welcome to Lesson 5C, Kinetic Energy Correction Factor. In this lesson, we'll define the kinetic energy correction factor and why we need it, and we'll do some example problems. Why do we need this correction factor? Let's go back to our exact equation of conservation of energy that we derived in the previous lesson. Recall that we split the power term into four parts. Only the shaft part remains here because the pressure work term was absorbed into this specific enthalpy term. The viscous work term is usually zero unless we have moving boundaries along our control surface. And we'll always neglect other work terms in this course. So this equation is exact. But we don't always want to be evaluating these integrals. So we made a simplification called the SSSF, or steady state, steady flow, form of the equation for a fixed control volume with well-defined inlets and outlets and nearly uniform velocity profiles. So this is the equation we'd like to use. But there's a problem with this simplified equation. It's not exact, it's approximate, and it's due to this approximation. Let me explain. We let V be the average speed at an inlet or outlet. Let's look at an outlet as an example. This is a nearly uniform velocity profile, but the actual profile may look something like this, where the average velocity is somewhere here. The problem occurs because of this V squared term in the integral. Let's look at that term by itself where we integrate over this outlet. The 1 over 2 or 1 half can come outside the integral. So we have our v squared term times rho, which I'll also put outside since we're assuming incompressible flow here, and then v dot nda. In this simple case, the unit outward normal is in the same direction as v. So this dot product simply becomes v itself, the magnitude of the velocity vector or the speed. So this integral reduces to rho over 2, and we integrate v cubed dA. The problem is that this is nonlinear, but we use the average speed to come up with this equation and this term. Note that m dot is rho v a, so one of these v's is embedded in m dot, and the other two are in this term. Mathematically, this integral over the outlet is not equal to rho v a times v squared over 2, which is what we have here, rho v a times v squared over 2. These are not the same. In fact, you can plug in any kind of velocity profile shape you want, and you'll find that this integral is actually greater than this approximation. The left side is exact, the right side is an approximation. But we'd still like to use this equation, so we'll plug in a fudge factor. We define alpha as the kinetic energy correction factor, which we get by taking the ratio of these two quantities on the right and left. Namely, we let alpha equal 1 over a, the integral over area a, which in our case is the outlet area, of u over v average cubed, where I'm defining u as the component of velocity in the direction of n perpendicular to the outlet. So we're calling this u cubed in this integral, which is the same as this integral. And let me complete this with a dA. So this is our kinetic energy correction factor, where u is the velocity component perpendicular to area A. In other words, we're assuming that the flow comes out straight and not at some angle compared to A. As I mentioned, this left side is greater than this right side, unless the flow is actually perfectly uniform. You can put any velocity profile at the exit that you want. Do this integration, and you'll find that alpha is always greater than or equal to 1. So let's go back to this equation that we want to use. What we'll do is insert an alpha in front of these v squared terms to account for this correction factor and the nonlinearity of the velocity profile. I type that up. Here we call this the corrected steady state, steady flow conservation of energy equation. The caveats are that this is a fixed control volume with well-defined inlets and outlets, but the velocity profiles are not necessarily nearly uniform anymore. And you can see the only difference is that we now have these alphas in here. Now I'll do an example where we can calculate this kinetic energy correction factor. Suppose we have fully developed pipe flow where the profile is parabolic as sketched here. It's a one-dimensional flow since once it's fully developed, this profile shape does not change as you keep going down the pipe. If our control volume slices across this outlet, we would need to calculate a kinetic energy correction factor for this outlet. We'll learn in a later lesson that this is the equation for this velocity profile. So let's calculate alpha. Well, as we just defined, alpha is 1 over a times the integral over that outlet a, u over v average cubed dA. Now let's analyze this. The cross-sectional area is pi r squared, since this is a round pipe of radius r. 
this u is u of r, and we need to calculate v average. Well, v average is just 1 over a times the integral from 0 to r, u of r, times dA. If we look straight on into this pipe, we would see a circle, and we're letting our area element, dA, be a small ring of dimension dr, this little width, and then 2 pi gives us the whole ring. So dA is just 2 pi r dr. So v average is 1 over the area, pi r squared, integral from 0 to r, and we plug in our u of r equation from up here, 1 minus r over r squared, 2 pi r dr. The pi's cancel. The 2 and the u max are constants which we can bring outside the integral. So we have 2 u max over r squared, integral 0 to r, and then we multiply these terms by r. So we get r minus r cubed over r squared dr. This is a simple integral. The first term is just r squared over 2. The second term is r to the fourth over 4 r squared. And we plug in the limits of the integral, which are 0 to r. This gives us 2 u max over r squared, r squared over 2 minus r squared over 4. The r squares cancel out, and we end up with u max over 2. So after all that algebra, the average speed is simply u max, the maximum speed divided by 2. I drew that here. Now let's go back to our equation for alpha. Alpha equals 1 over the area. We use the same dA as we did for calculating the average speed, namely this ring of area 2 pi r dr. And we plug in our u again from the given velocity profile. And that whole thing is cubed because of this term, divided by v average cubed. Plugging in this v average, we have u max over 2 cubed. And then again, our dA is 2 pi r dr. Again, the pi's cancel. u max cubed cancels with this u max cubed. We do a similar analysis to what we did here, except it's more complicated because you have to take this term cubed, and you get a bunch of terms that you have to integrate. I'll let you do that on your own. By the way, in my notes, anytime you see a squiggly arrow pointing down, this means there's a lot of algebra that I'm skipping. This is a fairly easy but tedious integral. And when all is said and done, we get alpha equal 2 for fully developed laminar pipe flow, which is the problem we're talking about here. And I'll insert that this is laminar pipe flow. Let me now give you some useful values of alpha for problems which we'll do in this course. For uniform flow, which is almost never the case in real life, alpha equal 1. For fully developed laminar pipe flow, which is the problem we just did, it turns out that alpha equal 2. For fully developed turbulent pipe flow, the velocity profile is not parabolic, but looks more like this, where it's fairly flat in the middle, but is rounded toward the walls. It turns out that alpha is about 1.04 to 1.11, depending on Reynolds' number. Just a preview of coming attractions here. Reynolds' number is the most important non-dimensional parameter in all of fluid mechanics. In fact, it determines whether this flow is laminar or turbulent. As a good ballpark estimate, I usually use alpha equal 1.05 for fully developed turbulent pipe flow. A few comments. We derived alpha for outlets, but it's equally valid with the same equation at inlets. It's tempting to ignore alpha, which means setting alpha equal to 1, so that you're back to our SSSF equation from the previous lesson. But I'll say to always include alpha in any of these energy problems. Going back to our equation, you just remember to put an alpha everywhere you have a v squared term. So it's not that much extra work. Another comment, alpha is especially important for laminar flows, where we found that alpha was 2 for fully developed laminar pipe flow. That 2 can make a big difference in your calculations. For turbulent flow, where alpha is about 1.05, it won't make that much of a difference. But again, always include it from now on in any energy problem that you do. This will make our solutions more accurate. Let's do another example problem. I'll repeat the exact same problem we did last lesson, where essentially we assumed that alpha 1 and alpha 2 were 1, since we didn't even know what alpha was yet. Now let's repeat using all the same values, but we'll approximate both the inlet and the outlet as fully developed turbulent pipe flow. So we'll set alpha 1 and alpha 2 to 1.05, and we'll replace v squared over 2 with alpha v squared over 2 at both the inlet and the outlet. In the previous lesson, the net rate of heat transfer into this compressor was negative 4.71 times 10 to the fifth BTU per hour, with alpha equal 1. Here our answer becomes negative 4.64 times 10 to the fifth BTU per hour 
with alpha equal 1.05. This answer is more accurate because we've put in the correction factor. The difference here is fairly small, only about 1.5%, but we do get a more accurate answer. As I've already said, alpha is especially important for laminar flows, but always use alpha from now on, whether the flow is laminar or turbulent. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. Thank you.